Uh, welcome back to another nighttime edition of Barn Songs. Tonight I'm with uh, Roman Buffalo of Roman Buffalo and the Loyal Order. Howdy. How you doing, dude? Real good, real good. Beautiful yeah. night. Happy to be here. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, this is why we live here. <laughs> it is. Uh, now till May is why I live here. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> October is when it begins. Yeah. My birthday was a couple weeks ago. My wife always says, "And your birthday is when it starts to cool down a little bit at night." Yeah. I call her a liar. I yeah. usually say Thanksgiving, but... It's something... That, it, it seems like November 1st... I've only been here four years, but it seems like it's always hot to Halloween. And November 1st is just like... Gee, winter-ish. Fall, really. But this year, we've gotten an early reprieve. I'll take it. We had a, a, a good spring for a change. Yeah. We had a hell of a summer as usual, though. So yeah. I, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm... I'm happy for the, the, the cooler weather. Yeah. I'm happy not swimming, let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are you going to play for us? I'm going to play a song called uh, Pray and Blues. Uh, cool. An older song, uh, I would say about 10, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I wrote it when I was with another band that I fronted called the Sand Rails. And, okay. And uh, it's more of us, a song about not so much lack of prayer, it's uh, about praying for sometimes the wrong reasons or asking for prayers, and uh, not really finding out the answer of those prayers. Yeah. So, um... Gotta have faith. You do. <laughs> That's the catch-all. <laughs> I'm not going to play that song. <laughs> I couldn't do it justice. <laughs> um, I did get that requested, though, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, nothing better than a bluegrass band playing uh, George Michael. <laughs> I'm somewhat surprised you guys don't, knowing that you play Purple <laughs> we do Rain. Play, we, we, yeah, we play Purple Rain. So. Not that, you know, Prince and George Michael are the same thing, but clearly you guys are willing to venture out. I think they were just busting my chops and wanted to continue busting my chops. <laughs> Alcohol has, a, has the, the feel there, so. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, the song, uh, my father was also in, in taking the decline at that point. And, um, you know, I, I just started putting it all together going, hey, what's going on here? And, how are these prayers, or what's it going to look like, and if they are answered, or what they're going to look like if they're not answered? Right. And is it going to still be the same? Does it matter? Or and, you know, I'm not trying to get too heavy on it, but it's just things that came up to my my brain. Yeah. Yeah. We've been putting out singles, and this is going to be the first single that we'll put out. Hopefully, we'll put out a CD uh, sometime next year. But it's going to kind of go with a a theme, and it's. A little bit off track for us, we're really usually writing about other things. Yeah. Uh, but we decided to, I don't know. Bluegrass say, concept record? It's not a bluegrass concept. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's a political album either. It's more or less just, you know, maybe our skewed view of some of the things that are going on right now. And yeah. Whether you agree with it or not. And we're trying not to take sides, and we probably won't. I should say I probably won't because I'm doing most of the writing. But, right. Um, yeah. It's just. There's two sides to every coin, and I'm trying to put them both in perspective right now. I'm <laughs> having trouble doing it both, but yeah, I have to get that have to get that part out. I have to get that yeah that feeling out. And I've never done something like this, so I'll, I'll go back to singing songs about girls in gardens at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you said you are a gardener, right? Or you, you like gardening? I do like gardening. Uh, I've uh, got away from uh, the vegetables. Uh, that was going to be my next question, yeah. I did a lot of carrots, lettuce, um, peppers. I don't like tomatoes, yes. Me neither. I, I don't like, I love tomato sauce, though. I love uh, ketchup and I'll eat them if it's all in there, but it's like, eh, I, I'd rather. The family loves the tomatoes, so I, I always throw a couple tomato plants, but I haven't done it in years. Uh, we have a lemon tree and we have an orange tree in the backyard, mm -hmm. so I'll make lemoncello. Oh, that's very uh, northeast. Yes, Italian. I, I, it's. Uh, <laughs> I figured out a way to make it, and uh, you know the internet is good for other things besides uh, looking up rhymes to words. <laughs> Thesaurus.com. Yes, uh, but uh, it's it's a lengthy process. It takes about. Three months, three and a half months. Well, when you make it, I want to... Because I've had it coming from, you know, Italian festivals, and I have relatives that make it, but I haven't heard of anybody making it out here. It's it's labor-intensive. you got to do everything a certain way with the lemons, and then you got to soak them in, 
Everclear and cheap vodka. Yeah. For like 40 months. <laughs> that like 40 long? Months, uh, for like 40 weeks. No, 40 days. 40 days, yeah. And then you gotta add sugar it's to like it. like Moses. Yeah, and, and you, if you add too much sugar, it, so it's hit or miss. Some matches are great. Yeah. And my buddy said, we gotta sell this. Uh, if we can do that, I mean, but. Yeah, right. We'll give away as gifts. Yeah. And uh, orange cello, too, is a lot of fun. She likes the orange cello. I've never had that. I've got some friends in the neighborhood that make coffee cello, too. As long as you soak it in Everclear and add sugar, you pretty much can make anything. <laughs> Any cello? <laughs> Waffle cello. I'm waiting for the bacon cello soon. Bacon cello. <laughs> it's uh, You're on the cutting edge of a cottage industry. The cello... The, there's bacon. The micro-brew cello. <laughs> I do. I want to call it leaven cello. I want to call it the unleavened experience. Can you even buy like any sort of like cello? Like oh yeah, you go to the. If I go to Bevmo, are they gonna have like I? Yeah, they got plenty of lemon cello choices. Because I have always just had it like a little old lady <laughs> made it. Without getting too much deep, my my grandparents came from Germany. Yeah. And on my mom's side, so I was turned on to Williams, which is Willie's, which is a, a pair of brandy. Okay. And I found out through my uncles that my grandmother used to. They used to take the pear tree, the pear bud, and stick the bottle right in the pear bud and let the fer let it ferment. Really? That way, yes. So they were you getting alcohol right there. And, and so we were in Germany uh, a year ago, and I picked up some, and they had this the the pear still in there, but of course it was processed. Right. It still tastes like well, it's rocket fuel. <laughs> it, it shouldn't be called brandy because it doesn't taste anything like sweet brandy at all. Right. It's just. The lemon shell, the pear brandy, the ouzo, they're, they're to trick your stomach so you can have dessert. Is that what the yeah, it is? Yeah, it is. Like, hey, I just had this shot. I'm, I'm hungry now. I'm going to have this piece of cake. Yeah. I'm going to have a cannoli right now. You know, like, it's honest to God. That's what it's for. Well, nothing's better than a good cannoli. Oh, God. A cup of coffee. Mm. My, wife, my wife makes the cannoli, so it's good. My favorite line from Goodfellas is, hey, do they serve Danish there? And then, <laughs> boom. She's <laughs> right in the head. Um... I like talking to you about this Northeast stuff, <laughs> or just this kind of stuff, because it's there's things that I don't get to talk to people about. Um, it's, it's a, Buffalo's a great place to be from. Uh, awesome food, honest to God. Yeah. It's my probably my only thing that I miss. I mean, I miss my friends and my family, don't get me wrong. Right. They fade. I, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, I have my mother there. That's it. I got yeah. a couple of cousins and my mom there. Right. I mean, um, some of my friends have, have left, and... Some have gone back. Some right. are never going to leave. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, I miss that, and I miss the food. I miss the four seasons, and that's it. But I, I, I like driving to the snow right now. We do it. We do it every year. We'll drive, you know, to Prescott or to Payson or to Flag for a weekend in like November, December. We get the coats out and the scarves out, yeah. and. Uh, then we come back here and eat it in an out burger and short sleeves, <laughs> and we're like, that was good. We're good. Um, I do have a question, though, relating to you growing up in Buffalo. So you grew up in Buffalo, correct? I was born in Buffalo, New York. Um, so I think about this a lot, having moved out here, right? Growing up in South Jersey, um, playing music in Philadelphia, whatever, those seasons, and you know how brutal they can be. Um, and I feel like, in ways, personally, it informed a lot of the reasons why I wrote the type of music that I did. And still do, right? Um... And, but coming out here, you know, there's all these bands playing, like, reggae, <laughs> and just happier, sunnier music, um, and I can't help but think that if I had grown up here, you know, I'd probably be on that path at least a little bit more than I am, having grown up with, you know, winters, and... Do, a good point. Do you feel that? I mean, you moved, you're, I'm guessing you moved out west roughly the same age I did, I was uh, 20 years ago, 22, 22 years ago, I got a couple years on you, but I was about your age. Yeah. I was, I was 30, I was 29, 20, 29 or 30. That was me, I was 29. So, yeah. Um, I moved out because at that time Buffalo was just a dying town. 
Yeah. But on the music side, it was very, very good. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to remember some of the songs that I wrote in Buffalo. They weren't sunny. I right. wrote a song called Blind. It's like a working class town. Oh, it's it's yeah. all working class. At that time, too, it, it, so it was horrible. Yeah. It was really, really bad. I mean, it's a good story right now because they're trying to... We have this inner harbor that they've done nothing for for years. And now they're going to... Now they're doing something. Gentrified. But it's still, it's 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 light years. I mean, you look at the Detroits, the Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh did it. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. even Windsor, Ontario, uh, they've done much more. And they get, we have the same, we share the same border, Canada. Right. So, uh, you know, there's, there's no threats of walls or anything like that because we have the Great Lakes. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, you had Canada coming down, you had New York. And so, I mean, we had so much influence there. Yeah. But uh, I was just a guitar player there. I was the lead guitar player in a band called The Skeptics. Okay. So uh, he would let me write a couple of songs. But he was a great songwriter, too, this guy named Tom Mullen. Right. And um, so when I joined the band, uh, he said, yeah, I'd write a couple of songs. And, uh, I did that, and, but they weren't sunny. They were... Right. They were... Darker know, tinge to them. They were definitely darker, but yeah. you know, you had that influence. You had that... It was sunny there four days a year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like... Not 300. <laughs> not 300. So, um, it, it's kind of the way it worked. You had time at home, and if you used it wisely, you could write a song. If you didn't, you ended up like a lot of people in Buffalo. Song you could write songs about. Yeah. So um, you know, uh, sometimes you take those paths. Sometimes you don't. And you just yeah. You keep the uh, the catcher's glove on, the antenna up, whatever right. you want to say. Just make sure you have big ears and make sure you have big eyes. Yeah. You got to be observant. And, but when I came out here, I liked the Gene Blossom sound. I liked. I'm a huge fan of the Pistol Arrows. Mm. Uh, when I was living in L.A., their album broke. Whenever I see Lawrence Zubia or something like that, I always say, hey, you know, I'm a big fan, huge fan of their music. Yeah. They, they encapsulated that that sound, which I think is Mill Avenue, but they put a lot of their influences in there too, which and some great songwriting. So yeah. yeah, I enjoy that. I can go down a list of a bunch of bands that some of those songs are happy, some of those songs are not. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of good songwriters out here, and I'm a fan of a lot of them, yeah. yourself included. So, I mean, anytime we get to do gigs like that, or I hear your new song, or I hear whoever we're playing with that night, right? Uh, that's, those are the things that I want to do. I mean, that's the reason why we're doing the, C the compilation CD. I want right. to hear these songs. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of good songwriters. It's a dying art. It is. You know, which is a shame. Uh, but, yeah, they just keep... Forging the path. Yeah, I, I, I agree, but that's a good observation, and I, I will definitely cop to that. Yeah. I would say my songs are happier now. Yes and no. Yeah. I mean, Garden Girl is a happy beat, but the guy's being a jerk. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. the girl's saving him. So. Yeah. Um, well, the last thing I always like to do is I always like to do a, this band versus this band. All right. Um, and we've talked a lot of music, but nothing really has come into my head specifically. I can't think of any particularly cool people to bring up for this. So, uh, I'm going to throw two pretty big ones that I associate together. Would you go Elton John, Billy Joel? New York or England? Seen them both several times. Well, in Elton John, he tried to do some Western stuff, you know, tumbleweed crossing or whatever. Oh, it's, uh, I played one of his songs on occasion. Um, and that's a good record. Good old country feeling. I think it's called The Country Feeling. Yeah. Uh, it's a great song. Um, and I, Billy Joel had Billy the Kid, so he did his Western jaunt too. <laughs> yeah. I like those songs of his, but I, I mean, I'm a big, I, Miami 2019 is always a great song too. Mm. I'm not saying it because it's 2019. 
I just remember the concert from New York and him playing that song, and it kind of was a moment where everyone was like, I saw the lights go down on Broadway, and, and no shit, so did everybody else. Yeah. But now you wrote that song you know, 20 years, 30 years prior, and right. here it is. Um, man, that's a tough one. I'm going to say equal. <laughs> Come on, you got to make a stand. I gotta, make a stand. I'm going to make me take a stand. Yeah. I would probably say Elton John. I'm, I'm a big sucker for his melodies. Yeah. Um, and he's incorporated, especially, I mean, he owned from what? Honky Tonk Chalet to Chateau to Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. That four or five year span, I think he had what? 97 hits. <laughs> really? so, yeah. And uh, I still pull out yeah, Goodbye Yellowwood Road a lot. Yeah. And I do like Honky Tonk Chateau a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Tumbleweed Junction. Tumbleweed Connection. Connection. That's yes. it. Um, that's another good song. That's where it's got that country. You know, country. Yeah, I think it's called Country Feeling. Yeah, that whole album. I don't know if there was a hit on that record, like a hit, but uh, it broke. Riverboat was Riverboat on that. That was a good song. I don't know. It kind of broke him. That put him in the spotlight at, oh, what's the place in East L.A.? Um, not East L.A., West Hollywood. That bar that he played at, which broke him. And, and yeah. that was just a, an amazing point for him. And he got a songwriter. He got a song, a lyricist, Bernie Toppin, who's mainly into those country, you know, country yeah, right. western type things. So. Yeah. Nothing better than hearing it from the English point of view. Yeah, yeah, right. It's such an interesting yeah, cause amalgamation. What the hell do you know about English? <laughs> right. You had like what four cowboys all well, the time. Well, that's no different than uh, some girls is my favorite Stones record. Yeah. And half of it, he's you know singing with a twang about the Marfa lights, and you're like, <laughs> all right, Mick. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sometimes it works. Insincerity can still work. Well, that's a, it's a good album, but it was it's kind of like the river by Springsteen. He's kind of they're kind of all over the place. They're doing country western and some yeah. girls. Yeah, but they're doing a disco beat. For they do disco. Show. Yeah, and uh, yeah. And then they got a song called Respectable, which is yeah. just a downright punk song. Yeah, yeah. And so, but I um, in a very close second, I would take Billy Joel. Yeah. I, again, he wrote a lot of songs in the '70s, probably right after Billy, right after uh, Elton John was his period. Yeah, you know, The Stranger and uh, the albums before The Stranger, Fifty Second Street. I'm trying to think of the other ones. He's got a little bit more regional connection too. Now that I'm thinking about it, just you know, singing about Allentown. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's yeah. a little almost uh, Seeger esque like uh, Seeger it's like it, I don't know it's right. you know you're in Detroit yeah right when you're listening they don't play it out here but <laughs> yeah. they got um, he's from New York yeah I mean he's a short guy who had to take up boxing because his mom made him play the piano yeah, yeah. figure that out <laughs> yeah. you know I mean you didn't have to take up boxing <laughs> no. we picked the right instrument <laughs> right, right. <laughs> something not a little more portable but um it's just a hell of a songwriter, both of them. And you gotta remember, he didn't have a lyricist; it was all him. Right. That's that's a point. Yeah, that needs to be and recognized. So he read all this stuff. He got screwed though too. Yeah. They both got screwed in the end. Yeah. I think one did a hell of a job in recovery. I think the other one's still working on it. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, Elton John.
time Don't know How many prayers The morning night How many prayers The second night How many prayers How many prayers For you back How many prayers The morning night How many prayers